Good evening and welcome to another Soul Surge. Uh, this is the Soul Surge, this is season two, episode seven. Before I start tonight, I just want to recap Sunday's message because it was a great help to me. I got it from Max Licardo and uh, I really need this in my life and I need easy. And this is something that just helped me. It enc- Soul Surge is all about encouraging people, encouraging one another. And uh, I hope this encourages you because it encouraged me. Calm, taken from Philippians 4, verse 4 to 8. And in these five verses, um, there, are five, there are four truths that uh, can help us be more calm. And I, I think many of us need more calm in our lives. So it starts with calm with a C, celebrate Jesus. The Bible says rejoice always. Rejoice always. We celebrate Jesus. We celebrate our salvation. The A is for ask. Ask God what you need in your life right now. L is for uh, leave your anxieties with God. And the M is for meditate, meditating on what is good. And uh, we find those in verse 8 of Philippians 4. So I hope that helps you. It's really helped me. I want more calm in my life. Now, today is Youth Day. So we're going to be having uh, some giveaways tonight, especially for the youth. Geared more for the youth. Two by 300 Rand KFC vouchers, e-bucks vouchers. And you know, with 300 bucks, you can get yourself a bucket, 21 piece bucket of chicken, or you can get yourself a 15 piece bucket and then even have money for some chips. So if you've got any youth that live near you or around you or with you, uh, this is gonna, we're gonna give away two of these vouchers tonight after this uh, meeting. All right, now, I want to go, I want want, want to just remind you of a song that Lauren Daigle sang. uh, I think it was last year or the year before that she came out with You Say. Great song. And uh, let me just remind you of the words. She says, I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. I think sooner or later in our lives, we all deal with these issues. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. We all face inadequacies and struggle with this at various times in our lives. Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low? Remind me once again, just who I am, because I need to know. You know what, we all need reminding. We all need reminding who we are in Christ Jesus. And we are the sons and the daughters of the living God. We are children of the God of creation. And the devil's always wanting to come and undermine that. You know, when he, when he goes to Adam in the, in the Garden of Eden, he tells Adam, did God really say? Now, God had said it, but he says, did God really say? Undermining God's word. When he comes to Jesus in the, in the wilderness temptation, he asks Jesus, he tells Jesus, if you are the son of God, always undermining. And you know what? He does it for us too. Are you really saved? How can you be saved if you do this, if you think that, if you act like that? Always undermining who we are. And we need to be reminded that, hey, what the word of God says is the truth. Yes, we are the sons and and daughters of the living God. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Bible says, I am a child of God. The Bible says, I am saved. The Bible says, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The Bible says that I am more than an overcomer. Listen to the words again and be encouraged through her song. I keep fighting voices in my mind say I'm not enough Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up Am I more than just the sum of every high and every low Remind me once
one second just who I am because I need to know. Tonight we are off to Riversdale, just down the road here, to Pastor Simon van der Paul, who's going to be sharing with us the fruit of faithfulness tonight. Hey, all the incredible people of Mossel Bay. My name is Simon and I'm the pastor at Leefgemeente in Riversdale. And we are talking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. I don't know about you, but I love fruit and just a nice, healthy, tasty fruit full of vitamins is just so incredible and just to be able to pick that from a tree is even better and fruit is really the evidence that a tree is healthy and that it's growing that it's producing and so the bible often refers to the fruit um, of, of a believer's life um, as referring to the godly evidence the outflow that that somebody is growing that somebody is spiritually healthy that they are being led by the power of the holy spirit 
And this is what Paul talks about in Galatians 5. And he, he's, he's speaking to a church here that had gone back into works and trusting in their own fleshly abilities to be saved. And, and who, who believed that because of their freedom, they could just do what they want. And he says, just because we're free doesn't mean we can just live according to every carnal impulse. Because the fleshly impulses are there. But he says, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit and we need to walk in step with the Spirit. And as we do that, the evidence will show. And that's the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That's the evidence of a godly life. And so it's more than just a list. It's really part of our daily lives. And we actually, it's, it's not possible to live the Christian life without the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as I read the word, as I grow in faith, as I pray and worship God and, and serve with the church, I'll begin to grow and, and, and the Holy Spirit will begin to produce this fruit in me. As I trust Him to fill me and to work through me, I will see the evidence of love and joy and peace and all these incredible things that will come through the Holy Spirit. And so the fruit that I'm talking about today is the fruit of faithfulness. Faithfulness. Such an incredible word. And, and something that's so rare in today's world. Um, but faithfulness, in fact, is an attribute of God in the Bible. And the Bible says so much about God's faithfulness in his love and in his promises. And he calls us to be faithful. And this is something that's, that's, that refers to being um, remaining loyal. Faithfulness talks about remaining consistently loyal and, and committed to what you've decided to do, committed to what you've promised. Um, and it's something that's become sort of a rare thing in, in our world where, where people are so unfaithful and so uncommitted in, in so many areas. In, in marriages, we see people quitting marriages, quitting their jobs uh, when things get too difficult, um, breaking business contracts and all kinds of things. And, and when things get too hard, uh, they stop serving God. They, they're no longer faithful um, in their relationship to Him. And, and the Holy Spirit wants to come and help us in this regard and strengthen us give, us, give us the strength and the courage to remain faithful. That's, that's something he does. But he also prompts us through his voice and through his leading. Um, whenever we're stepping um, into, uh, into, a, into dangerous territory, whenever sin comes um, on, onto our radar, whenever the opportunity to, the temptation to sin comes along, the Holy Spirit can then can help us and prompt us and so, so we need to stay full of the Holy Spirit and we need to stay sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit in this regard. And when we do this, faithfulness, the fruit of faithfulness begins to grow in our lives. And, and he helps us then to remain faithful to God when sin comes along, when the opportunity um, to, to, to fall, to sin, he can, he can prompt us and he can warn us. And he give, can give us the strength to overcome that temptation. Um, when, when there's the temptation to be unfaithful in your marriage, you know, to look at things, guys, to look at, at other women, whatever the case may be, to be unfaithful in friendships. He comes and he, and he, and he warns us and he, and he gives us the strength to overcome. And, and then he gives us the ability to be faithful in our commitments. Um, my commitment to serve at the church, my commitment um, towards other people, my commitment in contracts that I've signed to work faithfully with what God has given me. Um, as we are faithful with the little that God has entrusted to us, we will be made faithful with much. And so faithfulness is an incredible fruit and an outflow of the power of the Holy Spirit. And God is faithful and he will, through the Holy Spirit, he will help us to become and to remain faithful and to remain strong and committed in our, in our, in our Christian walk. So stay sensitive to the voice of the Holy Spirit and depend on his power. I hope that's helpful. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate your time and your input. Now, wouldn't you like more of God's presence in your life? I know I would. I would love more of God's presence in my life, in my home, in the church. And I've read a scripture for many years. I don't know how many times I've read it, but something caught my eye when I read it a few weeks ago. Let me read it for you. In 2 Corinthians 13, 11, Paul is writing and he says, Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace, 
then the God of love and peace will be with you. The Passion Translation actually says this, and God, the source of love and peace will mingle with you. Well, I want God to mingle more with me. I want God to mingle more in the church with us and in our homes. So let's look what Paul says here. Firstly, be joyful. Rejoice. We've covered this recently again. You know, over a over hundred times in the New Testament, you find the word joy, joyful, rejoice. Wherever the apostles went and disciples went preaching the word of God in the book of Acts, where they planted churches, where people's lives were being changed, where they heard the gospel, uh, we find these words and the people were filled with joy. Romans 14, 17, kingdom of God is not about eating and drinking, but it's about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. You know, one of the greatest lies the devil has sold us and sold the world is that, you know, once you become a Christian, that this Christian life is just a boring set of rules, religions and rituals. And many of us bought into that. The truth is that the closer we get to God, the more joyful we're going to be because the Bible says that in his presence is fullness of joy. So it seems to me God loves to mingle with joyful people. Secondly, Paul says, grow to maturity. You know, we all laugh when it's a two-year-old little kid that's trying to feed himself, and, but there's more food on his face, in his hair, and on the floor. But when that same little kid is now 20 years old and still doing that, it's no longer a joke. It's now a serious concern. God doesn't want us to just grow old. God wants us to grow up. God wants us to come to a spiritual maturity Years ago, I found this test. It's a test to gauge your spiritual maturity. And so, yeah, yeah, seven probing questions that you can ask yourself and see how many boxes you can tick. Question number one is, do you have a growing knowledge of the Word of God? And, and I think the emphasis is a growing knowledge. Because if, we, if we're regularly reading the Word of God, and if we've got, you know, our, uh, a disciplined devotional going in the week, then we're going to learn more and more of God because as we read the Bible, we get to know God more. So is your knowledge of God and the Word of God growing? Question number two, am I serving God by serving people? It's part of maturing, becoming more other-centered and less self-centered. You know, it's a, it's a sign of a true sheep that you, you're helping people, you're helping those in need. We go and read in Matthew 25, the difference between sheep and goats. Sheep were doing that, goats did nothing. Remember that we are never more like Jesus than when we give ourselves to others. Question number three, am I sharing God's love with others? Because the plan f from Jesus was that Disciples make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples who make disciples. That's been happening for the past 2,000 years. You and I are Christians today because that has continued. We cannot stop it. We have to continue to make disciples so they can make disciples. That's how it works. Are you sharing God's love with people? It's been difficult now with lockdown, but there's still ways that we need to, to do it. Question number four. Am I becoming more like Jesus? Because that's what the Holy Spirit is changing us to be more like Jesus in our nature, in our, uh, the way we behave. Am I becoming more like Jesus, more Christ-like? Question number five, am I becoming more generous in my giving or not? We can give without loving, but we cannot love without giving. And the more God's love grows in us, the more we give. We give of our time, we give of our talents, we give of our treasure. Question number six. Do I easily take offense? See, a mark of a, of a maturing believer is that we don't pick up offenses. We choose not to. We choose to forgive. And trust me, in today's life, there's, there are many occasions that we can be offended. We can be offended in church. Many people have left the church because they get offended. 
but it's a mark of a, of a maturing believer that we don't easily pick up these offenses, but we forgive people. We choose to forgive. And then question number seven, am I growing in my praise and worship and thanksgiving of my God and my Savior? Because you know what, the more I understand what a sinner I am and, how, and what God has done for me, forgiven me, accepted me, loved me, got an eternal plan for me, the more I just want to praise him and thank him and worship him. So, how many of those boxes could you tick? It seems that God wants to mingle with believers who are growing in their spiritual maturity, according to Paul. And then number three, encourage one another. Paul says, encourage one another. Did you know that even the great apostle Paul needed to be encouraged? I mean, here's a guy who wrote half the New Testament. Here's a guy who saw awesome things. I mean, gets transported into the presence of God, sees the glory of God, sees visions, heals people. I mean, he probably founded over 100 churches, encouraged thousands of believers, but there was a time in his life, there were times in his life when he needed to be encouraged himself. In 1 Corinthians 16, he says, I'm very glad that Fortunatus, uh, that, that Stephanus and Fortunatus have come here. They have been a wonderful encouragement to me. You know what, we all need to be encouraged, especially in the season that we're going through now. We need to be encouraged. We need to be encouraging one another. You know, I, I, I've started this soul search because I believe in December, God told me that 2021 is going to be a long, tough year for many people. And don't just encourage them on a Sunday, but encourage them in the midweek too. So I hope this has encouraged me. I hope it's encouraging you as well. But we all need to be encouragement. You know, encouragement makes it easier for believers to keep on keeping on and to fight the good fight in this fallen world. Encouragement gives us hope. Encouragement helps us through the tough times of life. It just helps us to keep going on and on and growing uh, to appreciate and experience this abundant life that we have in Christ Jesus. I don't think we've ever been in a season where we need more encouragement. So, you know, the challenge for us at New Life is, is uh, let's talk less about our own problems, about our own um, pains and our own aches and uh, our own sad stories. And let's, let's look out for each other and speak hope and speak encouragement into each other's lives. Because it seems that God mingles more with encouragers than with complainers. Number four, Paul says, live in harmony and peace. God is the God of love. He's the God of peace. He's the God of unity. You know what? Uh, we, can, uh, we, we have difference of opinions here at New Life, but uh, we, we should be able to disagree, agree to disagree in love. There shouldn't be conflict or disunity that comes about from our disagreements. Remember, St. Saint, Saint Augustine said this, in essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, but in all things, charity, in all things, love. And um, you know what? In Proverbs chapter 6, we find there's a list of seven things that the Bible says God hates. And there's a, there's a great old King James version word that is used in abomination. It says that the King James says this, these seven things are an abomination to God. And number seven on that list is a person who sows discord in a family. And we are part of God's forever family. So we don't want to be sowing discord. So in essentials, unity, which means that when it comes to Jesus, there's nobody else. Jesus Christ is the only way to God. He's the only door that we can enter to be reconciled through to God. He's the, only, he's the only Savior that saves us from our sins. That's an essential. We have to agree on that. But when it comes to non-essentials, there are other things in the Bible that, you know what, we can choose to agree to disagree, but we do it in love. I mean, currently, there's uh, big debates going on about uh, the vaccination. You know, are you going to take a vaccination? Aren't you going to take a vaccination? Some say yes, some say no. Well, it doesn't matter. What you decide, 
you go with. But we're not, we, we shouldn't be trying to force other people to, do, to follow our opinions. So, in essentials, unity, non-essentials, liberty, but in all things, charity. In all things, love. God mingles with his children who choose to live in harmony and peace. So these are attributes, these are, these are attitudes that Paul says uh, will help God to mingle more with us, according to what he's saying here to the Christians living in Corinth. Let me just wrap up here. It's a pattern, he says, it's a pattern for more of God's presence in our life. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice, grow to maturity, encourage one another, live in harmony and peace, and the God of love and peace will mingle with you. Amen. Let's pray. I really hope this has encouraged you as well. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you mingle with us. And our prayer tonight, Father God, is that you more and more, Father God, we need more of your presence in our lives, in our homes, in our church. And we ask that you would help us, Father God, on this path. We would live our lives in such a way, Father God, that you would be happy to mingle more with us. You are the God of love. You are the God of peace. And help us, Father, as, as we spend more time with you, that you, your presence will impart more love and more peace into our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask you. Amen. Okay, tonight, two by 300 Rand KFC e-bucks vouchers that we're going to give away, especially for Youth Day. All you have to do is WhatsApp your name and your number to the church cell number. And tonight, you must... We're going to do it from half past seven to half past eight because some of the WhatsApps don't seem to be coming through straight away. So we'll wait until half past eight. And then the fourth and the eighth numbers, names that come through, you will be contacted by nine o'clock tonight that you have won a voucher. Thanks for watching. Stay warm, stay strong, stay happy, stay safe. Keep shining for Jesus.